2020 World Cup. We gotta check this out. That was an excerpt from the ITC Men's T20 World Cup official campaign film, Out of This World. Today marks the start of, today marks 100 days to the start of the tournament and the film was launched to begin the official 100-day countdown. The ICC Men's T20 World Cup will be staged in the Caribbean and the USA from June 1 to 29. The film features T20 superstars such as former West Indies captain Kyron Pollard, South African Quinton de Kock, Australian Marcus Stoinis, Pakistani fast bowler Shaheen Afridi, India batsman Shubman Gill, and American fast bowler Ali Khan. So Lance, this afternoon, you know, we're getting ready, we're getting ourselves in the vibe. It's 100 days till the T20 World Cup. Yeah. It's so special to us as Caribbean people because it will be hosted partly by us here in the Caribbean. A lot to look forward to. And I love the, the theme for this movie, Out of This World, because we have, as a Caribbean, produced a lot of cricketers that are out of this world. Yeah, that's for sure. And the fact is that um, the Caribbean has hosted World Cup level cricket before, both on the men's and women's side. So this is the latest edition of that. And I have to say that given the build up to this and the, the, the sort of explosive um, rebirth, not, it's not really a rebirth, the explosive growth of, of T20 cricket, this is expected to, as ICC officials and CWA officials have said in the past, some of them on this show, that this is going to be like no other world championship, whether T20 or 50 over World Cup that has been staged in the Caribbean. And uh, the, the public ballot phase of the, the ticket buying is, is complete, and the remaining tickets go on sale as of today. And uh, there are venues, we are told, and matches in the United States that have already been sold out. No yeah. tickets available. So that tells you that this isn't a normal exercise. It's out, of, it's out of this world. Exactly. And you can tell by the response when it comes to the tickets because we did have Philip Spuna on the Sportsmax zone and he was speaking to that. The moment they opened it up, it was a record-breaking number. The interest in the amount of people, um, of course, Caribbean people living in America, they were so, so interested in purchasing the tickets. So that is a good sign because, you know, the involvement of those living in, in the U.S., for example, very, very interested in watching this ICC T20 World Cup. Lance, what's also exciting is I love the build-up segments that are happening. So earlier today, I saw um, like a flyer of um, players like Samuel Badri, Marissa Aguilera. All of them are doing something in Trinidad. So again, this is all part of the celebrations and the build-up to the tournament. I saw a post on West Indies Cricket on Instagram with uh, Bravo, DJ Bravo in New York. So again, there are different events happening um, in the U.S. and around the Caribbean to, of course, create that excitement to, of course, ensure that the public is really, really pumped for what is to come. And I can't wait for what is to come. Yeah, and when we look at the, the ticket allocation and the ticket interest based on the sales, we are, we are getting the figure from the ICC that over 3 million tickets have been applied for from 161 countries. Right. Now, now you have just over 200 countries in the world, and to think that people from 161 countries have applied for tickets, numbering 3 million up to this point, is, is mind-boggling. And, you know, when we were discussing on the show last year the fact that Jamaica didn't bid for uh, a, a, some part of the World Cup, that was part of the point that Chris Daring was making, who was the CEO of the 2007 Cricket World Cup organizing committee. Because the point he was making was that there's something happening with T20 cricket that we cannot underestimate. And the fact that Americans are investing so heavily in it tells you, and America is not, the USA is not a traditional cricket place, but of course in the diaspora, and, you know, there are a lot of non-Americans that live in, in, the, in the USA from countries that have a cricket culture, India, Pakistan, uh, and so on. So I, I think the point he was making, and it is being borne out now, is that we cannot compare 
the World Cup tournaments that we have hosted in the Caribbean prior to now to this one. This is different and there's something about the growth of T20 cricket that separates itself from anything that we had seen before. And these figures coming out of the ICC and uh, the 100 countdown stories that have you know exploded over the past 24 hours, I think they're telling us something. Yeah, and what I love um, leading up to, to the big, big day, the opening day, is that there are different stories and different storylines coming out from West Indies cricket and from the ICC. So they're, okay, so like, let's just say Australia, they'd have a storyline coming, you know, talking about their history, the build-up players that would have really made an impact where the World Cup is concerned. Yeah. So like, in our case, Remember the Name yeah. would be one of those stories because yeah. I feel like that has remained etched in the minds of so many people. That impact, I always say that's one of my favorite moments when I'm talking about West Indies cricket. And, and, and that's not because Ian Bishop is a Trini, is it? No, it has nothing to do with it. I'm anything. just teasing, yeah, I understand. It was about Carlos Brathwaite anyway. Of course, I agree with you, one. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yeah, go no ahead. No, man, I'm a Caribbean person, so I, I love all, everybody. Um, yeah, so that has really left an impact on me, and I think all these things add, creates that atmosphere, that experience that people are really hoping to enjoy when the World Cup really bowls off. Yeah, and Ricardo isn't on the show today, but you know Ricardo thinks that the West Indies has a really good chance of winning the World Cup based on the quality of the team. And we were marking in their latest T20 internationals that there's so much batting in this team, batting in most of the starting 11s or the, the 11s that they will use will have batting down to 10 or 11. You know, players who are coming in as, as tail-enders who can who can hit the ball and score big runs. So there is every chance that the West Indies could win this D20 World Cup being staged in the Caribbean and the USA. The issue is their inconsistency and uh, the fact that it's hard to depend on them because they don't perform at their optimum often enough, which other teams do, like Australia. I made the point that I think whether Australia is the best team or not, they perform to their optimum more consistently and more often than most other teams. So you would want to bet on a team like Australia yeah. because they're considered a tournament team. But I agree with Ricardo to the extent that the quality of this West Indies team is of such that they really have a chance of winning the T20 World Cup. There's no question about it. Um, there, there are two previous T20 World Cup triumphs in 2012 and 2016 told us that West Indies cricketers love T20 cricket and they, they are... There are six hitters, and if you're if you're a good six hitter, and if your team is a good six hitting team, then you know you have to be respected in T20 cricket because that's what that's what it's about. Yeah. And I think there is bowling enough developing in this current West Indies team to, team to suggest that the bowlers may very well be able to back up whatever the bat, batting the batting does. Yeah. So I, I think the West Indies have a chance. I wouldn't I wouldn't rule them out. And as you say respect, I instantly think mm. about Darren Sammy, who is the man that has done it before, uh, winning World Cups, and now he's at the helm as the coach. So for me, it's as if this is a man who has been there, done it already, and has experience. So when he speaks to the team lands, he's speaking from experience. He mm. knows what to expect. He, you know, he has been there in those moments where you feel as if things are not going your way, but then you turn it around. So I think even having him at the helm is a massive asset for this West Indies team. Yes, and when you listen to Darren Sammy talk and you listen to Rovman Powell talk, the two um, leaders of the team, Rovman the captain and Darren Sammy the coach, you get the sense of them having a kind of a synergy that is benefiting the team. And there's a lot of respect for Darren Sammy coming from Robman and Powell when you hear uh, Powell talk. And when you hear Darren Sammy talk, he's comfortable with Robman's impact on the team because Robman um, has been a winning captain up to this point. And um, there's something about his captaincy that invigorates the, 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 the players. And that is a good sign. And I think this combination of Sammy and, and Powell um, from what we've seen so far, is beneficial to this team. And I hope they can carry this through. Yeah, well, just a reminder of you, was 100 days away for the big, big T20 World Cup. We will be doing our very um, our part here at Sportsmax to ensure that we keep you updated on all the news leading up to the T20 World Cup. And we can't wait for that first ball to bowl off.
Let's take a quick break and we come back. We have a lot more on the Sports Snack Zone right here.